my motivation is about time, or more precisely time in physics or the passage of time. And uh, of course, passage of time, like the concept of numbers, covers everything from physics to philosophy, biology, geology, mathematics, and so on. Even mathematics, we'll see that there is time in mathematics. Um, but of course, also the kind of answers that I'm looking after and uh, that physicists would be interested is not so much uh, a philosophical uh, description of the feeling of the passage of time. It should be something that can be used to make predictions, to make physics, to develop physical models of reality. So it has to be kind of concrete and uh, kind of mathematical. But anyway, if we start with the idea that we all feel the passage of time, uh, we can also turn to art. And so here is, for instance, one painting, which I, I like quite a lot, and which I think is a good description of the passage of time. Probably most of us, and certainly most of my physics colleagues, would not consider that as a description or an illustration of the passage of time. They would have a clock or something like that, or a periodic event, maybe with waves. But I think here we see more that there is really something happening, something that is ongoing, that is developing, and where surprises exist. So let me just continue with this uh, introduction. So what is time? Of course, no one knows. But uh, as uh, San Augustine famously uh, wrote, if nobody asks me, I know. But if I were deserve, deserves to explain it to one who would ask me plainly, I do not know. OK, doesn't help too much. Um, a physicist would probably say that time is what ideal clocks measure. OK, that's almost a tautology, because what is an ideal clock? An ideal clock is something that measures time. So of course, time is what is measured by an ideal clock. Um, but what is a, a clock? Well, if you ask, again, an artist, you will have something like here on the right hand side. So these kind of clocks, which are probably closer to our feeling, or at least to my feeling of the passage of time. That doesn't mean that clocks, these kind of good clocks, uh, don't show something which is also time-like. Uh, maybe a good way of uh, naming this kind of uh, time is uh, Parmenides or geometric time when what matters is being. And indeed, I mean, time in physics is this parameter T that you find in Newton's equation of classical mechanics, or also that you find in a Schrodinger equation for quantum dynamics, or is also this geometrical uh, uh, characteristic of space-time that you find in, uh, in relativity, both special and general relativity. But so this is a kind of time which certainly makes sense and is relevant to physics. But as you have already written here, I don't think this is ex exhausting time. Um, and I think that an essential aspect of time is that there is a time before and a time after an event. For instance, a time before and after I made an important decision. This idea of before and after events, decisions, something that happens, and especially something that is surprising, something that is kind of new, something that was not foreseen or was not necessary. And then we really have the feeling that something has happened and that time has passed between before and after these non-necessary events. So here maybe I like to really uh, emphasize that for me, deterministic creation is not real creation because whatever novelty arises is really just an unfolding of what came before. I'll, I'll certainly come back to that uh, and explain more about that. And I guess a better, ah uh, yeah, then, okay, instead of creation, we could also say events, deterministic events are not real events, so are certainly not new events. They were already there if they are deterministic. So a better illustration of the passage of time 
is, I believe, with this kind of sand clocks. You may say that sand clock is essentially the same as this kind of more modern clock, except that the more modern clock is much more accurate. But on the long term, there's also some diffusion, some irreversibility and dissipation in all these clocks. But here it is on a time scale that we can really uh, apprehend. So if we think of two of these grain, uh, sand grains here on the top or near the top, which one is going to be the first to pass here to the lower part? Well, my physicist colleagues would say, oh, that's all determined by the initial condition and by the dynamical laws. But you don't need to think like that. Anyway, there's no way of really uh, predicting which sand grain is going to pass first. So there could be also some really creative uh, events here. And it's really the accumulation of all these little events, one sand clock, a sand, uh, a sand grain passing uh, first and, and so on. So a second concept of time is the accumulation of little events. And if these events are not necessary, are not deterministic, then I would call that Heraclitus creative time, when ma what matters is change. So certainly this, uh, this different concept of time, different from determinism is also uh, relevant, is probably closer to our feelings and is so far not really central in physics, but that's maybe something which is missing. 